May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O God. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of weeks ago, I preached about how the world is not the way it ought to be. And that seemed to resonate with people. And today I'd like to talk about how sometimes our lives don't turn out the way we wanted them to turn out. And there's lots of reasons for this. Sometimes it can be uh, because America is still racist and patriarchy and homophobia and discrimination of all kinds. And on an interpersonal, interrelationship level, uh, there's lots of different reasons. And so when you're younger, maybe you picture you want to get married, you want to have a good job and you buy a house and then you have kids and then uh, you want your kids to grow up and get good jobs and they can buy a house and then they have kids. And ideally, maybe you want them all to stick nearby so that you can have uh, meals together consistently and everyone can be right there. That's your plan for your life and your children and your grandchildren. Well, we know that that's not often how it works out. That would be great, but there's lots of factors involved. One is skyrocketing home prices. Another is the economy works now where people are very transient. It's rare for someone to work for the same company for their entire career. All these different things make it so that we get to a place where our lives aren't the way we pictured them or maybe even the way we wanted them to be. And how do we reconcile that idea of, well, this is what I wanted from my life, but this is where I'm at. I don't own a home. I don't have this. I don't have that. What am I going to do? And uh, in today's gospel, Jesus talks about divorce and has some stern words for divorce. And as many of you know, I'm recently divorced. And so, and a lot of uh, church members are also divorced. And when you get divorced, you have to struggle with that. No one gets married thinking, well, this will be good for a couple of years, but then we'll just get divorced and that'll be fine. Let's hope not anyway. And so for me, getting divorced and a lot of you, you've had to reconcile, what does this mean now that my life has not turned out the way I wanted it to turn out? And one thing I've been, rec re um, I've been processing is that they, we have a lot of liturgies for a lot of things in our church, for marriage, for baptism, for death, but we don't really have any liturgy for divorce. And uh, when I lived in the South, someone once said to me, getting divorced is like experiencing death, but no one brings you a casket. And that's so beautiful and also profound. And so one thing uh, we can think of maybe when you look at your divorce is that this thing that was your marriage, not your ex, but this marriage has died. And so what if you were to take some time to have a little funeral for the marriage? Again, not the ex. Those are two different things, right? The ex is one thing, and then the relationship is another. And this relationship has now died. And so how do we have like a process or maybe like a funeral where you can kind of say goodbye to that marriage and say goodbye? How do we, how do we do that? Because, and I, I, I want to do that well, and I want to do it in a healthy way because when something or someone dies, it leaves kind of a wound, right? If you have a loved one and they fill kind of a hole in your life, and then when they die, you're left with that hole. And it's really difficult. Well, with a divorce, it's even more painful because it feels like a deeper wound. And one thing is that if we don't do these liturgies and we don't have a process, we can end up just hanging on to that wound. And sometimes we think it brings us comfort, but it brings us wicked comfort. And we just cling to that wound and we let it drive us more and more and more bitter and more and more upset. And we're less likely to be happy because we're hanging on to this thing. And sometimes it's like, we can shake that fist at God. It's like, no, I didn't want this. I wanted a different kind of life. Don't you get it? You know, and you hang on to this. But we have to figure out a process of allowing God to heal that wound. Right? So maybe we have a funeral service for the marriage. Maybe you figure out whatever it is you need to do. And maybe it wasn't a marriage. Maybe you just had a relationship that 
uh, you look back on decades later and you're just like, man, I really wish that would have worked out. And you realize you're still kind of hanging on to this thing. And you're like, oh, and you allow it to kind of fester and all that. And how do we let God come and heal that wound? Well, in today's gospel, Jesus also says, he basically says divorce is bad and you shouldn't do it. And those of us who have been divorced, we're like, yeah, Jesus, we know. It was really, really painful. We get it. Thank you. But then like the, like everything in the gospel of Mark, the stories just quickly change. And all of a sudden we have this story about uh, children and people want to bring their children to Jesus for a blessing. And the disciples are like, no, 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 this is for grown folks. Get the, get the children out of here. This isn't their times. And Jesus has this great line where he says, no, unless you enter the kingdom of God with the attitude of a child, you're not going to get in. And that makes me wonder when you, when you hang, cling tight to that wound, when you cling tight to that idea that things aren't the way they ought to be, it's harder to have that childlike wonder where your eyes get bright and you're like, wow. It's something that's so much fun that I love when you see kids, they just say, wow. And it's like, you see that, it's like, I need to get that. I need to get back to that wow. That needs to be a big part of my life. And one thing, uh, one way we can maybe do this is kids never tire of things. If you hang out with a, a child, they'll be like, hey, let's play with the ball. And so you throw them the ball and they throw it back. And they say, do it again. Like, All right. So you throw the ball, they give it back. They're like, again. All right. So you throw it a third time, they give it back. They're like, again. And sometimes we're like, okay, kid, I'm done. That was three times. I'm tired. We're not doing this again. Uh, I'm done. And this uh, author writing in England like 100 years ago named G.K. Chesterton, he talked about how it's adults that we kind of grow cynical or tired and we have this wound and we're the ones that get tired of something happening over and over and over. And God never gets tired. God is more like the child that's like again, again, again. And the, the example Chesterton uses, and I think I've said this in sermons before, but it's a good reminder, is that when the sun rises every day, we could explain it by talking about the, the curvature of the earth, the rotation and the, and the sun and all that, use all physics and gravity and all that kind of language to talk about why the sun comes up every day. And that's interesting, but it also seems uninspiring and boring to me. And Chesterton said, what if the sun rose today because God saw the sunrise yesterday and it was so beautiful, God said, ah, oh, again, let's do that again. And hundreds of thousands or millions of days later, God is still not tired. And God is saying again, again, again. And how can we tap into that awe and wonder and that delight in our own lives? Well, I know from my own experience and talking to others that hanging on to that wound really makes it hard to have those big eyes and to go, wow. Or to even notice that a sunset, sunrise is beautiful. And so we need to do the work to heal of these wounds. We need to figure out how to let go. And it's a lot of work and it's complicated and uh, but it's when you come out the other side, it's beautiful. One way that I would recommend is go to therapy. It's very helpful. I'm a big fan. If anyone uh, needs uh, assistance in being connected with a therapist, please let me know. But it's uh, shown for the most part that it can be very helpful in letting go of that wound. Another big help is having good friends and community in your life. And I preached on this last week that ideally a church space is a community where we can come and share all of life's ups and all of life's downs. When you have community, you can bring it to them and say, hey, I got this wound and it's hard for me to open this and heal on my own. Please pray for me so that I can let go. And then people check in on you. Hey, how are you doing? It's like, well, I started to let go yesterday, but then I didn't sleep well and now I'm clenched tight again but keep praying for me, be there for me. We have each other and we're all trying to live this life because none of us are necessarily living the life 
that we expected to. And if you happen to be one of those lucky ones where everything turned out exactly as you wanted it to, give thanks to God and then be there for the rest of us. Because uh, we need help letting go, opening, and healing so that we can have the bright eyes of a child that says, wow, and then says, do it again, do it again. Amen.